It's your boy Savio, back at it again with another reaction video. Today we're getting into Karma's Army Part 4. I just recently did Karma's Army Part 3, and I don't usually do these videos back to back like this, but the next videos that I'm looking forward to getting into, I said I was going to do after I finished this series. So that's one reason why I'm doing this. Also, I just really enjoy making these videos, and you guys seem to enjoy my educational slash body slamming haters and aunties tangents that I be going on in these videos. I don't, people just say some dumb stuff, bro. And I, I feel like my little bit of qualification that I do have makes me obligated. Like I'm contractually obligated to let them know how dumb the stuff they're saying is. So if you're not here for that energy and you just wanted to see someone laugh and not talk, and just say, wow, that was cool. You clicked on the wrong video, sweetie. I'm sorry, that that is not going to be this. I'm probably gonna be spazzing, especially because I was told by someone on my Discord, by the way, go join my Discord, link on my Twitter, it's lit. Anyway, I was told by somebody on my Discord that this video brings up a topic that I've really been wanting to talk about. I've gotten a lot of questions from people on Twitter, Instagram, Discord about this specific topic. The topic is bundling. And I don't know like how it gets brought up or in what way, but I'm going to answer all of those questions that you guys have had for me and I guess respond to whatever is, is talked about with bundling in this video and whatever other dumb stuff is brought up because that's what we do over here. I have not forgotten about the other videos that you guys have been asking me to react to. As far as my TXT recommendations, I love TXT still. I have not been doing TXT reactions because I actually had the Can't You See Me video pulled down on like half of the countries on earth. So that was a little bit scary. Try not to get the channel, you know. Well, that's why I'm not reacting to TXT stuff at the moment, trying to let that cool down a bit. But I haven't forgot about them. Still love them. Their music is still great. In the meantime, we're going to get into this video. I'm going to be body slamming haters. You guys are going to be eating popcorn and laughing with your friends, family, whatever. And I'll see you guys on the other side. <gasps> Peace. Hello armies, I'm back again with another Karma is an army video. First of all, this video is not intended to hate other groups in any ways. And excuse me for grammar mistakes, cause we be new I sucks in English. <laughs> now let's start. The first topic is the classic D-Sang. Before 2016 BTS still didn't have any D-Sangs yet. And at that time, the boy said that getting a D-Sang is one of their biggest dreams. They want to receive it because it's D Sang. It's something they can't even dream about before. But they before this Karma's Army series, I didn't even know what a D Sang was. So shout out to you guys in the comments section for educating me on that. I actually do appreciate comments where people like tell me stuff as long as they're not like talking down to me because I do want to grow and learn. So if there's anything in this video that I miss or that you feel that I said wrong. Definitely don't hesitate to let me know because, I mean, th that's what this is. It's a mutual exchange of knowledge. They were insulted and got mocked for dreaming about it. On the week of their comeback, their melon rank was number 20. Considering YouTube views and digital sales, the other group is more likely to win at ESAG. BTS physical sales are beaten by the other group. They have zero public recognition and their fandom is just starting to grow. He's going too far. Isn't he said to be smart? He doesn't seem to know how to filter words. Well, well. Was it RM who said that? Who was it? Just tell me who it was. Because the, the person said they're said to be smart, so I'm assuming they're talking about RM, our big brain lord. But who originally put the statement out? Well, well. Let's see how many d sangs that BTS have now. As of January 30th, 2020. BTS has a total of 40 D Sangs, which is the most in South Korean history, <laughs> including 3 D Sang sweep from MMA 2. Hold on, hold on, hold on. on that chart, it said that they ended up winning two D Sangs, or however you actually say them, because I know this robot butchers the pronunciation of things, but they won two D Sangs the same year that these people were hating on them. So those people got bodied immediately. Gotta love it. 2019. Mama 2019. And GDA 2020. They are the one and only Korean act who can snatch all of the D Sangs from three major award shows in Korea. And recently they also win a D Sang from the FAC Music Award, which means that they now have 41 D Sangs in total. Did you see my bag? Did you see my bag? 
but of course. Okay, I'm going to cut that out so you guys don't see it, but I just got a Trump campaign ad. Not sure how that happened, but, um, yeah! People like to downplay BTS achievements, so now they claim that these sang is not important anymore. It's irrelevant, rigged, and just an attendance award. Year-end award shows have completely lost their importance. Adi Sang no longer holds the same value it did before. Everything is rigged. Everything's commercialized. Nothing genuine and fair. I'm glad my faith decided to focus on their own work and fans instead of this. We know it's rigged when Mama decided to give D Sang to Bangta. So what's new? 38 rigged D Sangs. How f Lots of things here. That First off, that says to Gigi, learn that word last episode. Thanks, guys. It's ironic. Again, we, we see it all the time. It's ironic how people continue to move the goalpost. It's always, oh, this is important when you don't have it, but then when you have it and I don't have it, that's actually shit. It's not worth anything. You are trash and my faves are still the best. Again, these people are dumb because we still have the receipts. We can pull up their tweets from whatever year, time, whatever, and show them that, no, actually, you did care about this. The whole thought process of, oh, this used to matter, and now it doesn't matter, at least, like, they're trying to somewhat cover their tracks to be like, oh, I know I used to care about this, but I don't anymore, which is dumb. But some of these people were just like, oh, this doesn't matter at all, and we know that's a lie. Funny VH Deuce Achegis, since 2016. Funny. What funny is they were so loud about how much D sangs that their faves got in 2016. They were mocking BTS because their faves got more D sangs. But now they said it's irrelevant. Rigged. Make it make sense. This is dumb because when people always compare two groups, what they always forget to mention is all of the other factors that affect things like that. Like BTS coming from a tiny label and that affecting their ability to chart, get sales, have fans, etc. in the beginning. There are contexts for all of these situations. So when people make dumb, blatant statements like, my group is better because they have blah, and your group has blah, whoever the group is, it's, it's dumb. That's not how you, you measure how impactful someone is, one, uh, especially because as they're saying, they're wrong in this case, but in a lot of cases, these things are manipulated and can be affected by the bigger labels, which again would not benefit a small group or a small act at the time from a small label at the time in BTS from Big Hit. But it's just a dumb comparison to make. People, just say you are jealous and go. <laughs> now let's hear what some people think about the latest BTS comeback. BTS poppers will argue with other fandom about who started the tiny number trend while their MV is losing views. BC are worried about the wrong number. They flopped on YouTube. They stay focusing on other groups instead of their faves as usual. Then they come crying when they can't get their 90 million gold. Okay, so I know what fandom is currently attacking BTS. And I know the whole deleting views thing with YouTube and like the issue of like bot views and, and all that stuff. But this is dumb. Like, literally, ARMY is the prototypical, we focus on our group, not other groups. That's why BTS is successful. The whole argument in some of these other videos is ARMY doesn't focus enough on other groups, and therefore they're selfish or something. I don't know what that argument is. Of course you're going to focus on what you like. If you don't like other things, why would you focus on the things you don't like? Oh, that's a question that I've asked a whole lot during these videos. But that's not to say that no ARMY has done it, because I'm sure it's happened. When you have any group of people this large, there are going to be idiots. But to say that ARMY as a whole spends too much time focused on other groups is literally against everything that they're also hated for, which doesn't make sense. I'm saying they, even though I consider myself ARMY at this point, because I, I want to keep this video somewhat unbiased, but I mean, point is that overall, the claims don't make sense. Like, if you're going to hate us, hate us consistently. Hate us for the same thing. Don't move the goalpost. Don't say that we are something and you hate us for that, and then say we're not that same thing and hate us for that. That doesn't make sense 
at all. First of all, the one who started the tiny number discourse was the other fandom. We were just saying that the Tiny 7 is iconic because some big television account and celebrity is also using it. No one said- Oh, by the way, tell me, probably on Twitter, probably not in the, eh, probably in the comment section too, tell me how to do that because I've been wanting to put the little 7 on my name, but I don't know how to, so hook your boy up, please. We started it, but the other fandom assumed that we did, so they started saying that they did it first. Second of all, BTS are not flopping. Not on YouTube, not anywhere. One of the major reason why we couldn't reach our 24 hours goal is because YouTube has new rules which make it harder to gain views, and YouTube also constantly deleting and freezing our views, so it make it twice harder for us to break the record. Despite of that, on official music vid- I've heard some about this whole deleting views and views getting counted as bot views and views, views getting frozen for a time period and like all of that, and I'm not really sure on why specifically it's BTS who gets targeted for this and why other groups, with the exception of one group, because when I had it explained to me, it was BTS in contrast to said group and why that group benefits, like the things that they do differently that help them benefit from loopholes in the rule and that BTS doesn't want to do that because that's not cheating, but not moral. So is it everyone who's getting smashed by this except this one group? Or is like BTS specifically being targeted? And if so, why is that? What may, I mean, not what makes BTS special, but you know what I'm saying? What makes BTS specially hated by YouTube? How does that benefit YouTube? There we go. That's, that's what I'm looking for. How does it benefit YouTube to hate on BTS. Video broke the record for the most viewed premiere video on YouTube with 1.5 million views. On also broke the fastest MV to reach 10 million views in one hour five minutes. Black Swan broke the record for the fastest MV to reach 1 million likes. And we broke so many records in other platform too. So you can't associate BTS with the word flop because they just didn't meant to be together. Back in 2016, it was still difficult for BTS to get 1 million pre-orders, and some people were underestimating them. Arm is going for a million pre-orders. I'd like to see them try. Million sellers on your- Rat me's? Really? Rat me's? Like, the, the stuff that people sit around and come up with to twist names into insults is literally beyond me. Like, what? Why? I swear these people don't put this much effort into their schoolwork or their relationships with their parents or or life at all. Like what why? Twitter's a dumb place, bro. It's it just ugh, ugh. Okay, let's go. Your dream big hit, lol. Thank you for your wish, but karma is an army. And now in 2020, Map of the Soul 7 surpassed 3.42 million pre-orders in the first week. And a final 4.02 million pre-orders before its release date, making it the most pre-ordered album ever from South Korea. It's a legend behavior, I think. <laughs> Some people believe that BTS uses bundles to boost the sales of Map of the Soul 7 albums. It's ridiculous, but here's what they said. So ARMYs and BTS and Bang PD once again for the billionth time taking a page out of other company groups books and going the bundle route. My faves truly paved the way. She really gave your life. And I'm glad to see you're not wait- I'm gonna let them finish reading this comment and then I'm gonna body slam this person because everything about this is dumb. So just one second. Wasting it. Happy Chi. Oh, I mean bundling. Happy- Okay, so that that's good enough. Happy bundling. We got it. All right, so bundling. First, for the people who don't know, what is bundling? Bundling is where a record label for an artist will bundle or combine two products into one. It's usually done through one of two means, but it can be done through other means, which I will touch on in a second. The first way that's most notable is album with a piece of merch. Now, that merch could be anything from a shirt, headband, hat, it doesn't matter. Whatever merch is being sold, you can bundle albums with merch. You can also bundle albums with ticket sales. For example, uh, this album right here, this is the Hollywood's Bleeding album from Post Malone. As you can see, 
It's dusty, gross, because uh, I've only ever opened it once when I first got it. The reason for that is because I got that album shipped to me when I bought a ticket to Post Malone's Hollywood Bleeding Tour, which I have a video on, by the way. You should totally go watch it. I wasn't intending to buy it. It just came with it. It was a part of the ticket sale. What that does is that ends up counting for Post Malone or whoever is doing it. And when I say whoever, most artists are doing bundling at this time, it's kind of the nature of the game. And it ends up counting as an album sale when I wasn't necessarily going on his website to buy an album. I didn't go into a store to buy that album. I just wanted to buy something. Now, I don't know how charts work in Korea because clearly I'm not Korean. So I'm gonna be talking about the Billboard Hot 200, which is the chart of all charts in the US that calculates album sales and album rankings, importance, whatever, in the USA at any given time. It comes out like every week. Okay. So the Hot 200 in January of 2020 recently changed their rules on bundling because people were going ballistic with the bundling. Like, I mean, they were bundling stuff with all types of random stuff. And so they changed the bundling rules to be more transparent to the, to us, to the people buying said products. So basically the changes to the rules were for a bundled album to count as an album sale. The product that is bundled with the album must also be available on the same website without said album. And so basically what that means is that uh, you can't sell whatever it is. So the t-shirt, the ticket, the whatever, without an option for the person to buy it without the album and the bundled version has to be priced higher. It was like four or five dollars higher than the unbundled version. However, uh, Billboard is actually going to change their rules again because this rule got abused because there's a loophole in there to basically say, okay, as long as it's on the same website, doesn't mean that the people have to see it. So it'd be 15, 20 pages of bundled merch and then all of the unbundled merch would be on page 22. Nobody's going that far to look for unbundled merch when they can get the same t-shirt for three dollars more and probably not even be told depending on you know how the person set up the website you're just gonna find a t-shirt that you like on the first you know one to three pages and you're gonna make your purchase and go on about your life and then all of a sudden the album's gonna show up and i'm like what the hell so they had to change the rules again and now i'm not 100 percent sure on when it's going into effect but the new rules are going to be that when something is bundled you have to not only have it bundled in a way that fans know. So when you go to check out, it's going to say, hey, it's a bundled item. It's a sweatshirt and an album. But also on top of that, you have to tell whoever is buying said bundled product how much of the price is the, the actual album and is the merch. So uh, that is supposedly supposed to help fans. It's more fair and transparent to let people know, hey, by the way, you are buying an album when you buy this sweatshirt, this ticket, this whatever, and you are intentionally doing that. And so we're going to count it towards the Billboard Hot 200 chart as you intentionally purchasing music from us. So uh, with all of that being said, explaining all of how bundling works and the ways that it's been abused and the ways that it will continue to be abused because it's basically performance enhancement drugs or PEDs or steroids because it boosts your numbers significantly because people like me in the case of this specific album will not be necessarily looking to buy your album because they can just go dream it on you know Spotify, Apple Music, whatever, but they will still end up buying your album and therefore increasing your sales, pushing you and your album up the charts as a result. And it's created a bunch of fan wars. There was like a Travis Scott, Nicki Minaj fan war, there was a DJ Khaled and Tyler the Creator fan war over it. Um, I think Taylor Swift was in a fan war at one point over her bundles. Point is, people get really upset about it because they feel that it's cheating. It kind of is cheating, but everyone's doing it. So is it cheating if everyone's doing it? I don't know. You can talk about it in the comment section down below, but that's what bundling is. However, this right here in this tweet, what this person is reacting to is not Bundling. Okay, I know that was a really long rant to basically set up that this person was dumb But I wanted you to be informed so in the future when people make claims that are baseless 
you can shoot them down or send them to this video. They probably won't watch it, but it doesn't matter. Point is, this information is now here for those who want to know. This right here, a two for one deal, is a sale. That's not bundling at all. And this is from Target. This is on Target's site. If this, uh, yeah, Map of the Soul 7 came out in 2020, right? If it did, then that means this was after January when the new billboard rules went into effect, which means that even if this was bundling, this wouldn't count for their charting, at least not on the Billboard Hot 200, because another one of those rules in that super long list of revisions that they released in January 2020 is that only bundles that are on your specific website will count for your album sales, so you can't do third-party deals, uh, which also happens a lot. You'll be on a whole other website buying a product that has nothing to do with music at all and you'll end up getting shipped a random cd from an artist who you weren't looking to buy from because they set up some deal with that artist record label to push their products yes they finesse it i don't know it is what it is this is not that this is on target's website and it says buy two for one free that's a two for one free like you can get a can of beans buy two get one free like that's that's not bundling. That's not how bundling works at all. And even if it was bundling, it still wouldn't count towards album charting sale. So that wouldn't make sense at all. That'd be a wasted marketing budget. I have a super long rant on that on the Karma's Army Part 3 video. Probably not as long as this one, but whatever. Point is that this is not bundling. Stop claiming that stuff that isn't bundling is bundling just because you're mad that someone is outselling your favorite group. It's dumb. Also, a big hit took stuff from your favorite group. Why are we outselling them? Why are we doing it better than you? That doesn't make sense at all. General rule of thumb, don't throw out words on the internet that you don't know what they mean because you will get some angry random black guy making a video about why you're dumb. Okay? Okay. Look at Bankton not using bundles. Everyone let's clear the search. BTS uses bundles, BTS uses bundles, BTS uses bundles, BTS uses bundles. So, they said target deal buy two get one free is bundling, and vinyl package is also bundling. Well, they are really uneducated about this bundle thing. Vinyl package is also bundling. Well, they are really uneducated about this bundle thing. Because what the heck, target deal is just a marketing strategy from target to sell their goods. It's not only BTS albums that got that deal, but other things too. Meanwhile this is the example. I wonder who said that. It was me. I said that. The bundle. Basically, when you buy merchandise like this hoodie, you'll also get an album with them. The album is attached to the merch to boost the album sales. That's what bundle means. So yeah, BTS didn't do bundles for Map of the Soul 7. The sales are organic. No English album. No bundles. And no radio play. Well, it's actually kind of sad about no radio play. Because it seems like... They are trying to block BTS to chart higher. We didn't even get 200 spins, and only 6 stations that play BTS new title track. But in the end, BTS and ARMY successfully reached number 4 in Billboard Hot 100 chart with ON. Meanwhile Map of the Soul 7 reached number 1 in Billboard 200 chart with Okay, I touched on this a little bit before. I'm not going to spaz on this too much. Part of the reason that BTS does not get as many spins here in the US is not just because, you know, xenophobia, that's part of it, by the way. It's also because the U.S. is kind of a pay-to-play place. Officially, you don't have to pay radio stations to get on the radio, but you do. Like, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you don't have to tip your waiter. It's not against the rules if you don't tip your waiter. But you have to tip your waiter. Like, it's, it's one of those things. So, based on what I know about Big Hit, they are not the I'm going to pay to do better kind of company. That's just not what they stand for. That's not what they do. So, it makes sense that they would, in turn, not have a lot of plays from radio stations that are looking to get their pockets and hands greased. Because, again, radio is dying. Sorry, it's the truth. Like... Most people are listening to music through streaming services or online in some way. And so these radio stations are trying to stay open in whatever way they can. And from their perspective, they don't really care that we, as BTS fans, really want to hear BTS's music on the radio and really want the boys to chart well. They only care 
that they make enough money to stay open to be here next year. And so in their minds, every single section that they're playing on or Black Swan or whatever is a, is a second that they could be playing a Justin Bieber song or a Taylor Swift song or whoever, whatever, you know, major label artist here in the U.S. where the artist isn't necessarily paying out of pocket to have their song played on the radio, but it is a part of their marketing budget that they are given from their record label. And so their record label is doing it for them. And that is part of the reason why songs break and almost immediately that song is charting so high because it's been on the radio all week. It's been announced on streaming services and people have been streaming it all week and people have started to buy the song on iTunes and the like. And so that's how songs can debut at five on the Hot 100 and the song just came out three days ago. And so part of it, that's not to say all of it, there is some shady business going on there of some no, not them because they are foreigners, but it's not a hundred percent. Oh, we hate them because they're Asian because, well, it's, it's more greed than racism. That doesn't sound better. I know, but it's, it's the truth. 420 to K sales and 347 K in pure sales. We can achieve all of that with organic sales. We didn't need English album bundles and radio play to boost our sales our power is really that big because teamwork makes the dream work <gasps> let's move to the next case do you remember pc year 2019 at that time bts lost all of their pca categories we didn't win anything but based on the voting stats we were actually the number one in every nominations and the content the tour category was particularly controversial because Love Yourself Tour had 2.06 million attendees, which is way bigger than the winner. So it didn't make sense how big... Who was the winner? Just let me know. Based on the big tours that I can think of from that year, I have an idea of who it might be, but, you know, just clue you boy in. BTS didn't win at least the concert tour category. They went to big stadiums and broke so many records with it. How come they didn't win? So armies were mad about it, and we ended up charting BTS' entire album's discography in the US iTunes chart. Well, we had such a productive anger behavior, but of course karma is an army. Because not long after that, BTS win the exact same category in the era 2019. The best group is gonna win indeed, and that's BTS. <gasps> The next case is about Grammy. On November oh, 20th, 2019, Grammy announced... The okay, hold on. Before before we get into the Grammy stuff, just... I, I had the whole spaz in, I think, part one about the Grammys. If you want to know how I feel about BTS and the Grammys, go watch that video. I'm going to try, try not to explode on this section. Their nomination and BTS sadly were not nominated for anything. This was disappointing. Because according to our latest album sales in November 2019, BTS Map of the Soul Persona was the number one best-selling album, but it didn't get the nomination that it deserved. You know what's crazy? The album that was number two won like 15 Grammys. Okay, it wasn't 15, it was like five, I think, which is a lot. That doesn't sound like a lot, that's a lot, especially for somebody's debut album. Shout out to Billy. love her work. She's great. Phineas is great. But, 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 boo. Grammys. Let's talk. They're not nominated for anything, anything. Number one selling album in the world and they don't get a nom, bro. Like, all right. All right, all right. I said I wasn't going to spaz. And we know the reason why. And just like what we did before, we ended up charting BTS' entire album's discography in the US iTunes chart again. It was to show them that we are bigger than- That is probably my favorite thing about ARMY as a whole, is that when BTS is slighted, a lot of ARMY, a lot of people who I've spoken to at least, when BTS is slighted, they're just hurt. They're not hurt personally, they're hurt for the boys, because they know how much work and effort and time and energy the boys put into their work, and to watch them be slighted, like, hurts them personally. So, they basically try to repay the boys, and I love that about you guys. Like that, that's so beautiful and so different than a lot of other fandoms that at least I've come across. Shout out to you guys for that. As a person who is an artist myself, that is how you want people to react. To love you through the chaos, 
not being like, you know what? I hate you guys. I'm going to be mad and just talk crap on Twitter. That's not constructive. Tweets on Twitter do nothing. This is how you move the needle. Things like charting, things like buying, things like going to see people. Money is what people care about in this industry. So when you guys are actively showing impact in a way that matters, not that like emotions don't matter, obviously. When you do things that are real, that can be seen, that cannot be argued, that's dope. And they think we are, and to show them that they can't ignore BTS forever. And now in March 2020, IFPI announced the global top albums of 2019. And BTS Persona is in top three of the list with 2.5 million units. And according to Chart Masters, I literally have no idea who Arashi is. And that's going to make me seem like a complete dunce because clearly this person is huge. But I, I have no idea who that is, like at all. BTS Persona is the number one global top albums of 2019. So it was kind of funny how BTS didn't get nomination for album of the year when they pretty much outsold everyone. <gasps> now let's talk about... If this video seems like glitchy and it looks like I stop and then start randomly in certain places, it's not me. It's literally like I'm getting an ad every minute of this video and so... Uh, shout out to them. Get your bag. I get it. Ads. That's how you eat. You're a YouTuber. But this video is going to be edited like super weird of me just cutting out the random Trump memes and the random read this book memes like that's or not memes commercials. But yeah, that's what's going on behind the scenes about the Kingsman incident in December 2019. Oh. Did BTS just have the exact same stage design as my face for the second time? Someone's management team has been attending my face concerts and taking notes. How are they gonna steal two set designs from us like no one is gonna notice? Well, I'm not really surprised, because it's not the first time for them to accuse BTS of plagiarism. I mean, it was obviously a Kingsman reference. It's not like their faves own Kingsman or anything. But the funner thing is, this BTS stage blew up and got the recognition from the author of Kingsman. Damn. He said he loved the performance, and he said that it will be cool to have BTS do a song for one of the movies. So yeah, that's a karma for them. And also, by the way, Kingsman is awesome. But uh, that's crazy. Like, I, can you get sued? This is news to me. Can you get sued over plagiarism for set designs? Is that a is that a thing? Also, was this like a consort? Uh, consort. A, that's a different word. Was this a concert design or was this like an award show? What is, what, explain this. What's going on here? Also in Outro Echo MV, there's a Kingsman reference too. So, that BTS stage was probably just a spoiler for Echo MV. Maybe it's connected to the BTS universe story and was meant to give some clue about BTS comeback in 2020. So it's not a plagiarism at all. It's not even about their faves at all. So please stop being delusional. <gasps> the last topic for this video is about BTS and Parasite movie. Oh, no. So, some K-popers were mad because armies and some other people talking about how BTS and Parasite movie being the pride of South Korea. And here's what they said. No, your K-pop faves didn't pave the way. Parasite did that all on its own. Stop being disrespectful to every single person that worked their asses over this masterpiece of a movie. For real. Parasite made history and now you guys are gonna make it about BTS. This ain't about them. Shut up. Okay, I, I want to read the tweet that everybody's responding to, so just hold on. Are gonna make it about BTS. This ain't... Is this not just a yay Korean pride thing? Like, Korea had a great year this year? Thing? Like, what... I don't see the issue. I don't read this tweet as... Them trying to say that BTS deserves credit for Parasite. I see this as a tweet saying, Yay, between BTS and Parasite being so great internationally, Korea is kicking ass right now. And is that not, like, greater recognition of Parasite? Right? No? About them. Shut up. So they were really mad about it. But the thing oh, is, it's not Armis who started mentioning BTS and Parasite together. It was mentioned by Jimmy Fallon. He said it's an amazing moment for South Korea because they have Parasite and BTS. Some Korean people also talking about it 
They said they feel proud and happy that they can live in the same time with Bong Joon-ho and BTS, and some Korean netizens said that the world classes of their cultural industry are Bong Joon-ho and BTS. It was also mentioned by the esports writer that BTS... All right, guys, put me on on who these two people over here are. This guy looks like he might be a gamer, and clearly this guy is some great footballer but uh yeah what's 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 going on in, on the other half of this picture educate me i want to know bts is one of the elite four of south korea president moon also mentioned bts and parasite he said bts and bang jun ho are leading the korean wave worldwide he basically said bts paved the way ha 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 so the president would well, not nah, hold on hold on before i go on this president rant do know I am from a country where our president says a lot of stuff that we as a country do not agree with. Don't don't hold us for that. We we're gonna try to we're gonna try to fix that soon. Okay? Okay. Anyway, uh if the president of your country says, hey, these two things are great for Korean pride, are great for Korea on an international level, why are you mad? Like what how is this our we didn't even say this. What Y'all mad at the president? Which, again, I, I know a whole lot about. It's not, it's, it's, it's not about a political side thing. It's a him personal thing. Okay? Okay. Uh, but, bish, please explain. I don't, I, I literally, I can't even comprehend how y'all mad at us for something that other people said, including the president of the country that you're defending. Doesn't make sense. Bong Joon-ho himself also talking about BTS when he went to Jimmy Fallon. He said he particularly enjoyed the episode when BTS was there and when he was asked about Korean music takeover. He said he think BTS has 3,000 more the power and influence that he have. He basically loved BTS. So why are they complaining about BTS being mentioned with Paris? Okay, again, quickly. The person who you're defending and the country who, well, the leader of the country who you're defending, and a bunch of other people all said BTS great and mentioned BTS in the same sentence and the same breath as great movie. And y'all mad at us when we didn't even say, bruh, I, bruh, I don't get it. I, I don't, like, I don't, I can't even wrap my head around the logic in this. I don't even know what to say here. Like, what? How? 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 Also, I read the tweet right the first time. Just saying. I just wanted to, you know, put that little point there. Parasite. I mean, please control your jealousy. No one discrediting Parasite. People love BTS and people love Parasite. And they are both from South Korea. So it's natural for us to talk about them all together. We just want to appreciate both of them. Because they are indeed the pride of South Korea. And you should just accept it. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoy the video. Oh, and if you still hear side note before this video ends, this oh perfect. This picture right here. Uh somebody, if you could find this picture and send it to me. Even if it doesn't have like the edited crowns on it, this picture I want. Totally not gonna turn it into a wallpaper on my computer or anything, but um I am. So send that picture to me. Thanks. I appreciate it. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you're still here, I want to ask for your help. YouTube demonetized my channel for reused content. And they've been rejecting my reapplication because of the same reason. But I made all of the videos by myself. And it's not reused at all. So if you have time, can you please go to my Twitter account at Itchuka and help me to retweet this so I can reach out to YouTube. You can also visit my Kofi page to support me. I will put the link in the description below. Go do that. Even if I don't, I don't know how old this video is, or if, or if this is still an issue. But yeah, go go hook them up. Oh, so you can check it out. Thanks for watching, and thanks for supporting me. See you in the next video. <laughs>
a really good time in the comment section last time with the whole Chucky thing, even though I didn't necessarily tell you to put that. I am telling you to put that this time so I can know who made it all the way to the end of these videos. I appreciate you guys a lot for sticking with me, watching these videos, enjoying the content, leaving your comments, educating me, talking with each other, creating this beautiful community that we have here on YouTube. And uh, if they make more of these karma videos, let me know. I would love to watch and react to more of them. But in the meantime, we're going to move on to other videos. If you have any videos that you would like me to react to, definitely make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time on the channel. Have a great day.